Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya, for those of you that are new here, and I am a watercolor artist. So I was in my garden this morning and I came across a really cute flower, but I really wasn't sure what the name was. So I looked it up and it was called Lantana. Then it dawned on me that about two weeks ago, one of my subscribers had asked me to paint that. So I thought it was a perfect fit. So I picked it and we're gonna paint it today. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so to start off, I've got my Arches watercolor paper, I've got a pencil and an eraser, and I've got my watercolor brush pens. I've got the Tombow brand, and I also have the Arteza brand. I've been using the Arteza brand for several years now, and I love it, but I was just introduced to the Tombow, and they work just as well. So I have both, and I've been using both now. Um, and then I've got my um, watercolor brush, and I went out in my garden, and I picked out um, some flowers here. One of my subscribers had mentioned that she loves these flowers and she asked me if I could paint one for her. So these are called Lantana and they attract um, butterflies. So they're beautiful to have in your garden. And so I just picked a few and I just want to show you how to paint them today. Oh, and I also have my Winsor Newton watercolors. So I might be bringing in those as well. It just depends. And then I have my water and a paper towel. All right, so we're gonna just, you can Google any image you want of, of any lantanas, um, but I, like I said, I was fortunate enough to actually have this in my garden and I didn't even really know what it was. Um, so I went out and I picked it and we're gonna paint it now. So it's got the five petals. It comes in all different colors too. So I have the red, the pink, I also have purple and white, and I think I have yellow out there also. Um, but I just picked a couple of these because they show nicely on camera. The red shows nicely on camera. So they've got the five petals. They have a little center, which is the green. And then they kind of, I love these because it's like they've got the, the red just on these two um, petals. And then the rest of them are just kind of blended out. Like all of them look like that. They're gorgeous. I don't know. I mean, maybe I have no idea if this is how it's supposed to grow or what. Because these are... Uh, completely red with just a little white and green in the center. So I don't know, I just thought that was interesting that they just have red on two of the petals. I thought those were cute. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lightly sketch out our stem. And so it's a flower, but it's a cluster, kind of like a hydrangea where it's got a bunch of little flowers to make the actual flower. So um, Let's see, this one's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then this one obviously has more. So make as many as you want. It's just like a little cluster of little flowers coming together and it makes just a nice big flower. All right, so I'm gonna start out with, oh, and then we've got the little stems that kind of just come out like this. And I'm gonna do mine a little bit darker so you can see it on camera, but normally I wouldn't draw this dark. All right, so we're gonna do a little center. And then the petals are almost like a little heart shape. I don't know if you can see that on here, but it's like, okay, so there's the five petals, but each petal is almost like a little heart. It's really, really cute, really dainty. So I'm gonna start out and I'm just gonna make like a little heart. So you're just gonna go around that center and make like five little hearts. And if not all of them are hearts, that's okay, because I see some of mine are more rounded than others. Um, it's totally fine. So. Even if some of yours are just more rounded, it's fine. And just go ahead and start making some clusters. And proportionately, um, you can make some larger, some smaller. It just adds a little bit of dimension to your painting so that they're not all exactly the same. Um, some petals are gonna be hiding behind other petals. That's fine also. So I'm just gonna kind of go quickly here and I'm just lightly sketching it out. If you don't wanna sketch it out and you just wanna start with your watercolor brush pens, go for it. I'm gonna do it like this just to kind of show you in steps. Try and get all five on there. Sometimes I go a little too big and then I only have like enough room for like four petals, but kind of try and squeeze a fifth one in there somewhere. And then you can have some that are kind of like, um, uh, the perspective is like where it's looking up. So maybe like these petals here are are bigger, the ones that are closer to you, and then smaller, the other um, smaller, more towards the top. So it kind of looks like the flower's looking up. 
So it's nice to have a little variety in there also. And you can make as many as you want, like I said. Because I kind of counted some of my flowers and they all had like different amounts. I don't know if maybe some of the flowers had died out or they didn't grow yet. I don't know. But it just seemed like all of my little clusters had different amounts of little flowers on them. I'm going to make another one over here. All right. And then their leaves. I actually pulled off a leaf because I wanted to show you this. So the leaves, I think it shows better on the white paper. They're kind of like these long ovals um, it, it, with a point at the end, but they're very um, jaggedy here. And you see a lot of veining going on in there. So it's kind of like a very long, narrow leaf, and it's very jaggedy at the sides here, at the edges. So we're gonna draw that out also. And they just kind of come out um, in little clusters also. Like, I don't know if this was like maybe a little baby that was gonna be growing and I picked it, poor thing, but um, I just wanted to show you. So there are these like little clusters here. Um, so it starts out smaller and then it gets larger, it goes around. And then you have some leaves that are just kind of single like this. So again, this might just be a leaf and this might've been a little little bud that I, I, I picked. So it probably would have been a flower one day. All right, so how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start out with my long, narrow, leaf and then we'll make all those jag jagged edges later don't worry about drawing all that out now and then i could actually make this one even a little longer like that and let's see i'll make maybe i'll make another one down here and just make sure it's got a point at the end there and then erase whatever marks you don't want. So one thing, I know I've said this in videos before, when you erase something, try not to wipe it with your hands for two reasons. Number one, your hand has oils on it. The oils will get onto the paper and then the paint doesn't absorb as well into the paper as it should. And number two, you might smear it. You might smear all your pencil marks depending on what size um, lead you're using. So always use a brush. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple different ways. I'm going to take my Tombow, and if, if you have these, it is, I don't know, these are not named, like the Arteza brand, they name their colors. Um, this one's called Red, and it's got an A101, whereas the Tombows, I'm noticing, don't have a name. They just have a number. So I'm using 856 and 755, if you're following along and you have those. All right, so I'm not going to outline the whole the whole shape, the whole petal, because see how there's white in here? And then you also see a little dot of that limey green in there as well. I don't want to cover this whole thing in red. I want it to kind of fade out, especially in these. You see it fading out. You see the edge is a little bit darker, crisper, and then it fades as it goes into the center of the flower. So I am going to just kind of outline a little bit of my petal here. And I'm using a size one brush, but use whatever size you have, a small brush, obviously, because these are dainty little flowers. And then I've got enough ink, uh, watercolor ink, on my um, brush to just go ahead and do the next couple. And if you want to make those a little bit redder, a little bit deeper, then just go over it with your, um, your watercolor marker. I'll show you. So this one here I outlined a little bit. I brought it in with the watercolor brush and then I had ink left on my brush so I just went ahead and did the other pet petals. But if you wanna deepen it up a little bit, just kind of go over again with the um, watercolor brush pen. There, and then just keep going around. Now since this is um, a dainty little delicate flower. It is a little bit more time consuming. There's, it's a lot of little detail in here. If you don't have patience for that type of, you know, flower, then maybe this is not the flower for you. Um, maybe you should go on to something a little bit um, easier, maybe a, like a, a bigger flower that doesn't have as much detail because this has a lot of little clusters in here. And I know sometimes me too, I don't have patience for all this. But um, but this is a beautiful, beautiful little flower. And if you're lucky enough to have it in your garden, you'll see some gorgeous butterflies in your yard because this really attracts butterflies. 
Okay, so I'm not gonna go ahead and do my center yet because I'm gonna let that dry and I don't wanna put in my little green and then it smears out. So I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna go ahead and show you another little technique um, with the same marker. So I'm just taking my, my tin here with my watercolors on it and I'm gonna be putting just a little bit of that watercolor marker right there. Now I might be saying watercolor marker and I might be saying watercolor brush pen, same thing. So I just, I say both sometimes, so I don't want you to get confused. All right, so I laid down just a little bit right there and I'm taking some water, see that? You can actually use these on your palette as well. So if you don't wanna actually have the harsh line of the watercolor marker on your paper, just put a little bit on your tin here or plate or whatever you're using and mix it in with a little bit of water and you get the same effect. And just go over it with your brush. Now I want it to bleed out a little bit, or I should say in, in towards the middle. And here again, if you want it to be a little bit deeper, then you can always go over with your uh, watercolor brush pen and do the edge a little bit more. And I'm trying to fade it into the middle here because I love that white center that they have. Mine have white centers, um, even my yellow ones did, and my purple ones, um, but there might be some out there that look different um, that don't have the white center, so I don't know. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of different um, kinds out there, so this is just the one that I'm doing today. Oops, part of my petal fell right off onto my paper. Hold on, there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna use my Arteza. I just wanna show you the Arteza. So this one here is a little bit more of a brush. My, my point here is more of a brush. It's not as much like a marker. So I'm just going and I'm just filling in just the outside of those little petals with a little red. I'm not really outlining it. I almost made like little dots and then I'm gonna bring it in with just some water. Now, since these are little flowers, don't use a lot of water. Otherwise, you will have a big puddle mark there and you don't want that. So just make sure your brush is just damp, not too wet. Okay, so that was the Tombow. This is the Arteza, pretty much the same look. Like I said, I'm gonna show you really quick here. So this has got the point that is more like a brush. It's movable, it's flexible. This one here does not. This one here is more like a marker. You can't, you can't bend that at all. So like I said, I like both of them. I don't, have, I don't have a favorite. So it's just kind of like what look you're going for. So you will see me from here on using both, um, both markers in my paintings, as well as my regular watercolor, uh, Windsor watercolors, because I love those too, so. All right, so here again, with the Arteza one, I just did little dots, and I'm just blending it in, blending it in. Now this one obviously is a little bit more pronounced because I did the outline first. So let's say we wanna go ahead and get that look on this one. Let's go ahead and just put a little bit on the end. So it's almost like the, I'm almost doing just like the top of the heart. I hope this video can show you that, but it's just like the top of the little heart that I did there. I didn't outline the whole thing. And I'm dampening my brush and I'm gonna blend it in towards the center. Now this little flower is just as deep as that one. So you can get the same look, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go ahead, since I put all these little splotches of um, the marker on my palette, I'm just gonna go ahead and use those. So I'm gonna kind of quickly go around because I don't wanna bore you to death with all these little petals because it is a lot of little details. Oops, too much water. See, I get a little bubble on there if you have too much water, you don't want that. Go around and then, so I did a couple here in a row and then I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna blend them in. And it's easier probably if you do one flower at a time because then if it dries, it doesn't blend as easily. Um, but I'm 
just trying to hurry up the video here so I don't bore you. And then this one here, I'm just gonna make, so it's nice if you have some that are a little bit deeper than others in the color, um, because it just gives you a little push and pull in your painting. So go ahead and deepen up some of them if you want to. Otherwise, if they all look the same, your painting looks really, really flat, and you don't really want that. You want the push and pull. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. And I think this is a pink, I think this is a different one I'm using here. This is the 755, whereas before I was using the 856. So this one's got a little bit more pink tone in it. And there again, if you can do a little bit of different variety, even maybe throw in a little orange or something in here, that'd be really, really pretty. See, this one's just a little bit more vibrant pink. And I really like that. That's really pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one again. Okay, so I have, again, my Arteza and my Tombos. Um, and if you're following along and you have these, it's the Seaweed Green Arteza 173 and 126. So those are the three greens I'm using. And I think I'm gonna start out with the 126 in the Tombow. So I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna kind of put in all these delicate little it's got all these little um, stems in here that connects all these little petals together. Okay, and then I'm gonna come down. All right, so I am going to just start filling in and I'm just gonna, I know we didn't give it the jagged edge before, but I don't know if you can see this, but I'm giving it that little jagged edge right now. I'm coming in, it's almost like a little zigzag going down my leaf. like that, okay? And if you wanna fill this in a little bit, you totally can. Um, I am going to just kind of come in and lay down a little bit of paint like this. I'm just going in the same direction. I just laid all these like little hash marks down in the same direction. <clears throat> I'm gonna go to a bigger brush though. Uh, let's move to, what's this one? I think this is a two. So I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna start blending that in. Fill in your little leaf. And it's okay at this point to have lights and darks because we're gonna give this a little variation. All right, and then I'm gonna bring in a little bit of this green here. Nope, not yet because it's still wet. But you know what I am gonna do? I really feel like I need a little bit of my regular watercolors. So I'm gonna use a little bit of my, I believe this is my sap green. So I'm gonna start dropping in a little bit of my sap green in here. So as you can see, I don't just stick to one watercolor. Um, each watercolor um, and even uh, watercolor brush pen, regular watercolors, watercolor inks. I've done, you know, the watercolor uh, India inks. I love those. Um, I don't stick with one medium. I really don't. I just love the look of everything all combined. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow in there. Just give it a little bit more um, dimension with some yellow. Highlight it a little bit, maybe more towards the end here. So... Here's my leaf, that's my real leaf. And it's got all these little veinings in here, darker veinings. Once this dries, we will go ahead and put in some of the veinings, but right now I just wanted to get that shape down. So um, if you did not wanna do this with the watercolor markers and you just wanna go straight to your watercolor, uh, regular watercolors, that's totally fine also. I'm just gonna stick with my watercolor markers. And I'm gonna make those little jagged edges again. like little hash marks or little zigzags, whatever you feel more comfortable with. There's no right, no wrong. It's just that it's got a jagged edge, so however you get there is fine. I'm gonna bring in my paint a little bit more with these little hash marks. Make sure you keep that point though. Look how pretty that is blending in together. So that's just the watercolor marker and regular watercolors all in one. I'm gonna blend it in. 
Oops, I went back to my size one or I think that's my one. But I'm gonna go back to my size two. I did that on accident. All right, so here again, I just bl I just blended it in towards the middle. So you can see my edges are a little bit darker and crisper. And then as I pulled it in with water and my brush, I just pulled it into the center of the leaf. So it looks a little bit lighter. So here again, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of my yellow. I just love that pop of yellow in my leaves right there. And that's just my cad yellow, Windsor cad yellow. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the next leaf. And if you wanted to go over with a small brush your um, stems, you can, just to give it a little bit more of a watercolor look rather than the marker, go over it with like a size one or a size zero. Just add a little bit of water and just kind of fade that out a little bit. It'll give it a little bit more of a watercolor look rather than the marker. It just softens it up, it thickens it up, it blends it in just a little bit more. So it doesn't have that harsh line. Just be careful going around your um, flowers here that you don't pull some of that red into the stem, especially the little stems that are peeking through up here. Try not to, try not to, um, to get that into your, your stem there. All right, so now that we're gonna let those dry, we're gonna go ahead and do our centers. I'm gonna still use that 126 Tombow and I'm gonna put a little dot of green in the middle of each. Just make sure your flowers are nice and um, nice and dry. And if you want, oops, I skipped one here. And if you want, you can leave it like that or you can go in with a really small brush and just give it a little tap of water just to blend it in a little bit like that. You know what? I think this one needs a little bit more cluster. I really like, I really like the cluster look. So, I'm going to draw out a few more. So it's the five petals, all little hearts. And then you can keep adding more to this as you keep going and just filling it in more. Maybe one over here. And I know that some are like sticking out, you know, um, with the stem at least the ones that I have in my garden, some of them are like sticking out. So they're not like really clustered. I mean, they are mostly clustered together, but you do have a few singles that kind of just pop out a little bit. So I'll go ahead and add my pink. All right, so I outlined that. And now I'm gonna bring it in a little bit towards the center and try and keep that white center mark if you can though. All right, I'm gonna let those few dry and then I'm gonna add my green um, center to it. But these, they're still damp, but that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take a darker green. Let's see if this is gonna work. And I'm gonna start making all that little veining that's going on in there. So it starts with a, a center one that goes all the way from tip to tip. And then it has little ones that branch out into those little um, jagged areas. And see that nice fine line you can get? I'm using right now, it's the Seaweed Green Arteza. If you don't want it this dark, then just go ahead and use a different one. But you can get really, really thin with the Arteza because it's more like a brush. So if you don't push down too hard, um, you can really get you know, uh, thin lines. That's one of the things that I do love about the Arteza versus the Tombos um, is that these, you can get the nice thin lines. It's like a brush. So again, from point all the way to point, and it's okay if it's jaggedy and not completely straight. Like that. And then this one. And then if you wanna go ahead and add just a little bit of um, darker green, just to pull all your painting together, you can go ahead and just add like, almost like a little bit of a shadow on some of these little stems up here. 
I'll do a few up here too. Oh, and don't forget when you do new flowers, if you keep adding, make new stems also. Otherwise it just looks like they're floating there and that would look a little funny. All right, so I'm gonna take my small brush and I'm gonna kind of blend that out a little bit. Just a little bit of water. Blend that out a little bit so it gives it a little bit of shadow and it's not as stark on your leaf because right now it just kind of looked like a dark line on your, your leaf. Just blend it out a little bit. Make it look more like watercolor than a marker. So there's a lot of different ways to use these watercolor brush pens. Um, I'm having a blast with them. So far I've only used a couple different brands, but I just, I love them all. They're just so fun. And especially if you're going and painting, you know, off site and going maybe to the beach or a garden or wherever, um, it's so nice to bring these. It's just easy to carry. You just bring a little piece of paper, bring your little markers, bring a little thing of water, a couple little brushes and you're set. Um, so I just, I love that. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of a darker green, maybe my sap green again just more towards the middle here, and I'm just dabbing it on. I just wanna make that, the veins that I just did, I just wanna make them blend in a little bit more, but I'm not going over my whole leaf because I love that yellow that we had done. So I'm just going in with some sap green and I'm just dotting it on. Blend it in a little bit, especially towards the center here where the stem and the leaf meet. But I just think it needs a little something. So then the, the veining is not as pronounced. And I think I might just add a little bit of that sap green here also. And then the flowers, I don't know if you can see this, but the flowers, let me take one out here. So as it grows this way, it's got these little spikes at the, at the end here, all these little spikes. So if you wanna do a couple of those coming out also, more towards the bottom here. You could do that with your marker. Actually, you know what? I will do that with my marker. It's all these like little marks coming out. These little spikies. Like that. So cute. All right, so these flowers are dry. So let me go ahead and put the green in those other flowers that I had made. So pretty. That is just really, really pretty. I just think it's simple, it's pretty, it's delicate. Um, if you want to keep adding more and you want to make this a nice big cluster or if you want a few coming out, popping out each way, that'd be really pretty too. Even if you did like a little cluster of red and maybe a little cluster of yellow or orange over here, because um, in my garden, I have them all growing together. So I don't know how the plant actually works. If one is red and then there's a yellow growing next to it or if it's the same plant that grows different colors, I don't know. I haven't really done my research on that. All I know is I've got all these beautiful colors out there. So this is a really, really fun flower to paint. So I highly suggest it. And again, if you want to ever go out in your garden and just get these cute little vases, I have, I went to like Salvation Army or Goodwill and I just picked these cute little vases here for like a dollar, little mini ones, so that when I go into my yard, I could just go and collect little, little flowers and um, to paint them for you. And I just have them here in water. And then when I'm done with my painting, I just put it in my bathroom around my counter. It's just really pretty to have around the house. So I just wanted to do one more thing. Um, my painting, uh, I, I'm gonna be framing all my little paintings because um, I sell them at a store that I sell my art. So I just want this to be a little bit more full. Um, so not just like one little you know, sp uh, sprig on there. So I'm gonna be taking a little bit of a bigger brush and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a splatter paint. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over it with maybe some of my um, opera pink here. Make a little puddle of my opera pink. And that's Daniel Smith. So I do have a couple Daniel Smiths on my, um, on my palette as well. And I'm just gonna be splattering it just a little bit like this. It just fills in the page a little bit more. So let's say you didn't wanna do any more flowers on here, you were done, but you just thought it just needed a little something. You can always go in and add a couple little uh, leaves or vines, or you could just um, give it a little tap with some color like that. And it just fills in the painting really, really nicely. Okay, so one other thing we're gonna do is just to give these a little bit more dimension, because um, right now they were looking a little bit too flat to me. So like if your flowers are clustered together, obviously some flowers are um, shadowing the petals underneath it. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna use a little bit of my um, 
my paint's gray and just a couple like where maybe the flowers are like um, touching, the, the petals are touching. I'm just gonna go in with just a little bit of Payne's Gray. I'm gonna blend that out. And it just gives a little bit more, again, of a push and pull of shadows. So see how I just kind of deepened that up a little bit right there? I didn't even do the whole flower. I just did where like maybe where the cluster was right here. So let's go ahead and do maybe these. And it looks really, really pretty because then the shadows give it a little bit more of a realistic look. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that over here too. So it just makes like some petals look like they're underneath other petals. It just gives it that illusion. And then right now you can see exactly how much dimension I'm like putting in. I can see the difference already. It was just looking a little flat to me and I knew it needed a little something. So we're just adding a little bit of a shadow here and there. And you don't really have to do the flowers that are on the outside because there's nothing really shadowing them. It's more like inside here, like the clusters. There, to me that looks better already. Beautiful. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little something. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up and you can make a comment in the comment section. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this one. Have a great day. Bye.